you know, look, we have to be, we have to balance this. We have to understand there, there is a right to freedom of speech, a right to freedom of expression. We should respect that, and there should be not, there shouldn't be pressure on people to restrain what they're writing on the basis of whether or not there should be violence. On the other hand, you know, look, we do also have to recognize that if people in the Muslim world started burning crosses and they started trampling across Christian artifacts, there, were, there wouldn't be violent attacks, but there would be an uproar here, right? There would be anger. No, not really. Uh, they kill Christians every day. They behead them. They rape them. Uh, they enslave them. And I don't hear any uh, uproar. Uh, welcome back to the show, folks. Before we get to our next guest, Rachel Liu, uh, we want to hear from you. Is President Obama handling Islamic terror properly, in your view? Go to Newsmax.com slash polls and vote now. That's Newsmax.com slash polls. And joining us now is Rachel Liu, senior contributor at The Federalist and professor of philosophy at the University of St. Thomas. Hello, Rachel. Hello. Great piece uh, that you wrote, it, It's Time for Islam to Mature or Perish. Um, I, I got to say, though, um, if it doesn't mature, I don't know how many of us are going to perish uh, before Islam would perish. Yeah, well, obviously I'm kind of looking over the long term, but definitely I would prefer uh, a less violent, more mature type option. <laughs> if that's possible. But of course, part of my question in the piece is whether or not that is possible. And uh, yeah, go ahead. And, and, and your conclusion? Well, I don't, I don't, I really don't know. I, I don't, I have some, I have a lot of questions and not a lot of answers to those questions. So I'm sort of more focusing on posing them as questions for Muslims and people who are serious about this to, you know, hopefully consider. Yeah, and, and, and it's, a, it's a big problem. I mean, you just heard the, um, the, the uh, I think that was NBC's uh, news uh, terrorism uh, analyst, and, and, and he was saying, uh, obviously, that um, you know, freedom of speech is great. We all support it, blah, blah, blah. No excuse for violence, but. And once you put a but in there, uh, that's a big problem. And then, of course, if, hey, if they were trampling on Christian artifacts and this and that, there'd be an uproar. No violence, but an uproar. And I don't see it because every day, as I said, Christians are being slaughtered. Uh, by radical Muslims, uh, whether it's Boko Haram, whether it's ISIS, you name it. And you know what? Not even the president of the United States, who's a devout Christian, says boo. Yeah, well, that's definitely true. There, there are a lot of problems really all across the planet. And Christians have been, yeah, murdered and tortured and mistreated on a pretty massive scale, mostly by Muslims. I mean, you also have secularists, you know, like in North Korea doing similar things, but especially by Muslims. So yeah, this is obviously a huge problem. Of course, you should also note that groups like Boko Haram don't discriminate that much, right? They're happy to murder fellow Muslims too. No, that, that, that is true. All right, so what will it take? How will, how will it be possible for uh, this, this, I mean, I know you point to uh, Christianity making a, um, I won't say a comeback, but uh, increasing in popularity in various areas that have been traditional Muslim strongholds around the world. But nonetheless, how is it going to be possible to get, you know, what, what the media likes to call peaceful Muslims, good Muslims, to speak out, to get more proactive, to quote unquote take back their religion when they're afraid that if they do that, they'll be targets. The media is afraid that if they show a cartoon, they'll be targets. So they don't show it. I mean, I see capitulation rather than standing up to this. Well, yeah, I mean, part of what I'm suggesting in my piece is that I think a lot of these problems are sort of deeper. They're actually, you know, theological, spiritual uh, sorts of problems that Islam has never dealt with. And that's, it, it's sort of hard to come up with an immediate plan of action for addressing those kinds of problems, right? Uh, but I do think that really Muslims have serious issues with being, uh, sort of peaceful contributing citizens of modern liberal societies. And those are really deep problems that go back far into sort of Muslim intellectual history, Islamic history. So, you know, they, they have to deal with those questions. I don't think it's going to be enough just to, you know, have lots and lots of people come through, you know, denouncing violence or whatever, which has happened to some extent, right? I mean, there are Muslims who stand up and denounce violence, who write letters to the paper and that, all those kinds of things. That has happened to some extent. But at some point, you're going to have to deal with some of the deeper underlying reasons why this is happening. Is it possible for Islam to exist as a 
faith that's sort of decoupled from the kind of political realization that it's traditionally wanted to have. And that's a major question that I think Muslims are going to have to, I mean, I can't really answer that question, you know, for them, right? But I think it's a big question that it's going to have to be dealt with. Yeah. All right, folks, check out the piece at thefederalist.com. Is it time, or I should say, it's time for Islam to mature or perish. Rachel Liu, senior contributor at The Federalist and professor of philosophy at the University of St. Thomas. Thank you very much. Good to talk to you. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, no, it's a tough, tough uh, issue, tough, tough question. And uh, we will uh, continue to talk about it. Up next, former Colorado Congressman Tom Tancredo will be here. So don't go away on Newsmax Television.